Like with many popular game series, it's common to see their contents bleed into other franchises. Whether it's a simple reference, skin, or sometimes even entire characters. Needless to say, gamers love seeing their crossovers. Thankfully for us, Saints Row's had its fair share of game cameos. Some might be smaller than others, but we'll be looking at every Saints Row appearance in other games. For this video, we'll only be looking at official appearances, so mods and fan-made games won't be discussed. Also, we won't be looking at Agents of Mayhem. I know it's technically not a Saints Row game, even though it technically is, but the Third Street Saints aren't actually in the game, even though the universe was made by the Third Street Saints, but ah! Uh, look, we're not mentioning Agents of Mayhem. With that in mind, we'll get started. As a special promotion for pre-ordering Saints Row the Third on Steam, you'd be given three Saints-themed items in Team Fortress 2. These include Mark of the Saint, the Cold War Luchador, and the Apocophist. Mark of the Saint is a cosmetic badge with a purple and silver floor de lis It could be worn by any of the classes, but it doesn't offer any special perks. The Cold War Luchador is simply Kilbane's mask that's exclusive to the Heavy. It comes with a familiar green and red color scheme, but it also offers a variety of other color combinations. As for the Apocophist, it's just a regular pair of boxing gloves with Kilbane's murder brawl ring. So even though the model doesn't match the design we're familiar with, it at least offers unique taunts when the player has them equipped. <laughs> Onto a more popular Saints Row appearance, we have Johnny Gat and the 2D fighter Dive Kick. Developed by One True Game Studio, Dive Kick is a game where your primary method of attack is to, well, Dive Kick. And Johnny Gat just happens to be a playable character. He comes with a few alternate skins and even has his own story mode where he attempts to find a hobo. Beyond dive kicking, Gat's special moves include firing the black hole gun, launching a Ronin car, and calling in Jersey Shandy wielding the dubstep gun. The story mode ends with Zinyak impersonating one of the other fighters before Gat is pulled out of the simulation. Overall, it's fun to play as Johnny Gat, but I'd only recommend this game to hardcore fans of 2D fighters. Next, we have a small Saints reference in the first-person shooter, Homefront the Revolution. Once you've made it far enough in the campaign and have unlocked the Holloway Red Zone, make your way to this location on the map. Here you'll find the street sign that says Saints Row. There isn't much reason for this reference to be in the game except for Deep Silver being both Homefront and Saints Row's publisher. But I do give this game mad props for making two of my favorite game series an easter egg. Volition has never been a company to shy away from referencing their older games and later titles. Nowhere is this more evident than in Red Faction Guerrilla. By making your way to this location in the Irradiated Zone, you'll find this radio tag from Shandi. Let's take a listen. Why is the pain of death more tolerable than the shame of living? How is it we can face a vast unknown? We can't even look our families in the eye. Oh, so yeah, there's fun, Shandi. Huh. If you listen closely to the background, you can hear police sirens from Saints Row 2. Also, it says Shandi's a new Verona colonist on her tag. How this ties into the Saints Row timeline? I don't even want to think about it. For a quite unexpected cameo, Ultor and other companies from Saints Row 2 make an appearance in the game UFC 2009 Undisputed. By unlocking 1500 cred in career mode, you're given the option to make XXXY, Viral, Acoustic, and Ultor a sponsor. This doesn't do much in the game except being able to wear their logos on your shorts. And yeah, that's it. If you squint hard enough, you can pretend you're playing Fight Club. Let's now take a look at the 2D turn-based title, Worms WMD. Players who pre-ordered the game back in 2006 were given access to a DLC called the All-Star Pack. This DLC includes items from various game series such as Payday, Goat Simulator, and a handful of others. As you could probably guess, Saints Row was one of the games and its inclusion was the dubstep gun. Instead of functioning as you'd expect, the dubstep weapon is a turret that can randomly spawn in the beginning of a match. Compared to other stationary weapons, its damage is less severe but it can hit multiple targets and burrow through debris. Also, background scenery will bounce up and down depending on the map. The last two games we'll be observing are from the indie company No Goblin. They've had a close relationship with Volition, so it isn't surprising they've been able to make Saintro references and even add Saintro characters to their games. The first reference is Julius's car in Roundabout. Roundabout is a mostly open world game where you play as a limousine driver in a continuously revolving limo. By finishing missions and gaining high combos, you'll begin making money which can be spent on properties, skins, and upgrades. Skins is where we'll keep our focus since this is where you'll unlock the Julius skin. 
It doesn't change the dimensions of the limo, but it does give it a slick purple and gold paint job, quite similar to the Saints vehicles in the third. Being one of the cheaper skins, it lets you sport the Saints early on in the game. Now on to No Goblin's other title and the most popular Saints Row appearance, we have Pierce in 100-foot Robot Golf. As the name suggests, you control a giant robot with the main objective being to golf. When playing outside the story mode, you're able to select Pierce Washington with an oversized version of the mech from Saints Row 4. His special abilities include being able to fire his left-handed turret and self-destructing the golf ball in mid-air. The mech can't be customized like the other robots, but you do unlock a Planet Saints in the story mode which allows you to buy Saints-themed skins. Each one comes with a humorous description that either reflects on the series or is an inside joke on No Goblin Saints Row streams. There's even a short cutscene which explains why Pierce is in the game, but it makes as much sense as you'd think. This is easily one of the best Saints cameos, and I'd highly recommend checking it out if you're looking for some more Saints action outside the series. Now we just need Johnny Gat in Mortal Kombat, Smash Bros, or Time Splitters, and we'll have the greatest crossover of all time. Well, there you have all the known Saints Row appearances in other games. If there's one you like in particular or want the Saints to show up in another franchise, please leave a comment below. Before ending today's video, I'd like to give a special shout out to my Patreon sponsors. John, Jordan Flattery, Sam Just, Delta, KM, and Scissor. Like always, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.